Hi, everyone. So my name is uh, Alia Farid, and um, like some of the previous uh, speakers, I am going to talk about Kuwait's participation in um, Shared Bayanya in the 2014 Venice Bayanya for Architecture. And uh, give me a second while I figure out how this clicker works. Yeah. So this is a ground floor plan of the first iteration of the Kuwait National Museum and um, the focus of our um, participation in the, in the 2014 Venice Biennial. Um, the museum was established in 1957, and the first museum director in Kuwait was a man by the name of um, Tariq Rajab, who paralleled to uh, the establishment of the Kuwait National Museum, was also leading several ar archaeological missions on the island of Felica. Uh, with the intention that the content or the, the unearthed artifacts would later fill the museum, no? And um, I'm interested mostly, or the, the investigation is mostly interested in this leap from this sort of, this style of architecture, which was influenced by Iranian architecture and, uh, and much more in the vernacular style, uh, to this sec the second iteration of the Kuwait National Museum. Is this fine? <laughs> Uh, so the second iteration of the Quay National Museum was designed by a French architect named Michel Cochard, uh, who won the, um, the competition through an open call uh, in 1960. Uh, and, um, and the museum was finally, um, well, was under construction for many years, from 1960 until 1986. And, um, and, and, um, so the idea for the pavilion was to focus on, on the Kuwait National Museum and telling the, the modern um, urban transformation, history of urban transformation in Kuwait. Um, because not only stylistically was this building a mo uh, done in the modernist style, but also because of, the, of how ideologically the, the museum institution is, I guess, like the example par excellence of what it means to be a modern society, you know? Uh, so for the pavilion, um, the, the research team was comprised of 25 people from different disciplines and divided into a fabrication team, a publication team, and a film team because the pavilion was used as a set for a film that I will not share tonight because it, it wasn't really um, successful. But concurrent to the pavilion in the Arsenale, um, we also organized an intervention in front of the Nordic Pavilion in, tr in an attempt to kind of disrupt the, um, the binary setup between uh, developing countries, which have the pavilions in the Arsenale, and more established countries that have permanent representation in the Giardini. Um, so this is a, an image of Malin Bourne, uh, who designed the emblematic Kuwait Towers, and, um, and a version of the drinking fountain and that's, um, that points to the architecture that was designed by her partner, Sun Lindstrom, the Kuwait Water Towers. Um, this was placed in front of the Nordic Pavilion as a, as a sort of way of returning uh, an imported work of architecture to its country of origin after it had been interpreted by the local population. So for the six-month duration of the Venice Baño, um, the Kuwait uh, Pavilion provided free drinking water tower, uh, free drinking free drinking water towers, <laughs> um, free drinking water to the visitors of the Bayano. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the setup of the Venice Bayano, but there are two venues, no? There's the Arsenale, where less established countries um, uh, lease the space for the duration of the Bayano and set up their exhibition, and then there's the Giardini, where, the, where there are permanent pavilions. And um, so there were many things happening in that year. Uh, this was only a, uh, a set, no? The Quay Pavilion was only a set. I have to go back to this image. But a lot of the research for this project was distilled into a publication that was designed by an artist duo called Dexter Sinister, and where researchers contributed, uh, where the, the headlines of the building served as like a guideline for these essays that that focused on, uh, you see the buildings were named Land of Kuwait, Man of Kuwait, Kuwait of Today and Tomorrow, and the Architectural and Cultural Section. Um, so I'm not doing a very good job of explaining this, but these served as like, uh, as, um, 
as guidelines for writing about maybe the, f the failure of the Kuwait National Museum and some of the attitudes um, behind the client-architect relationship. So I'm interested also in, in, um, in some of the reasons why the museum uh, did not succeed and understanding why the, the museum, and despite having all this, all this effort having gone into it, was never um, really opened and understanding the function of a museum in an uniconic society, right? Um, so after this project on my own as an artist, and I'm speaking from the perspective of an artist, um, I've organized some work that looked at the, more at the contents of the museum, you know? Focusing on that. Yeah, and this is, uh, it was a very interesting negotiation, this idea of, uh, of setting a drinking fountain in front of the Nordic Pavilion. Um, I think because it's, it's never really happened that a, a, um, a, a, a participating nation in the Arsenale tries to intervene in the, in the Giardini. So further to that, this, this reoccurring element, has, the drinking fountain has appeared in my work again. At an, at an exhibition that I did in Porticus in, in, uh, last summer, in July 2019. And um, I guess with also this moment of transformation in Kuwait, I was interested in, in also how um, the changing relationship to national, uh, natural resources with the advent of oil, no? So, so seeing how with the advent of oil in Kuwait, the, the nation could afford desalinated water and to... Um, yeah, to source its water from, from the sea as opposed to um, getting its water from the Shat al-Arab, which is for, further north, no? And uh, this is a, yeah, I'll tell you later. <laughs>
right, it's now finished. So, yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, I, I'm, I, um, I'm an artist and I um, do a lot of work related to architecture and urbanism, but from the perspective of an artist and also in, uh, with, an, with a desire to understand what happens also beyond the, the, the kind of limits of a city, you know? And with how, um, Ali, you're recording me. And, um, and with the urban transformation in the, in the, in the Gulf in the recent years, seeing um, what, is, what is being pushed out, no? So that film that you just watched was, um, was shot in Kishim, an island uh, in Iran, very close to the United Arab, Arab Emirates. In fact, it's where the UAE and, or the Gulf and Iran come closest. And that whole history of relationship on the Eastern Arabian coast and Western Iran, that's sort of being obliterated by uh, modernity and, um, and recent urban development is, is sort of uh, the interest in my, of my work. Recent, recently, and also, like as I mentioned, uh, changing the changing relationship with natural resources. So the first image that you saw, the first iteration of the Kuwait National Museum in 1957, was actually the summer palace of um, of a ruler and a dear friend of the of, of one of the founders of Kuwait and the ruling family of Kuwait, and was sort of testament to the kinship and kind of friendship, friendly relationship with kind of other neighboring countries in the Gulf. No. And I think with the advent of oil and modernity, uh, the gaze has sort of shifted and, and especially um, you can sense on the Gulf that there's a sort of an antagonism, a local antagonism, no? And, and more of a desire to uh, fulfill a Western expectation of what modern cities feel and look like. And, um, and so for the, pro the, pro the second project that you, show, that you saw of um, the drinking fountains, it's just a starting point on uh, of some new work that I'm developing about um, yeah our changing relationship to natural water. Uh, I mentioned that Kuwait used to get its drinking water from Shat al Arab, which is the, at the confluence of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, and uh, and and today um, gets its water from like desalination plants that were established a lot earlier. Um, but um, how that has also se severed our relationship with the s south of Iraq, which was very much a part of Kuwait's um, cultural, cultural background. No? And so following that exhibition at Porticus, the idea is to make another film uh, that looks at the draining of the marshlands in southern Iraq and, um, and, and, uh, and the reflooding of the marshlands as well, because there's been an attempt to kind of revive uh, the marshes. And, and how that's affected like an, in, an indigenous population no? and their way of living and, and their own st vernacular style of architecture. No? Thank you very much. I